Right, I'm now behind the gardener's, former gardener's house, cottage. Um, about to go into the walled garden. So this was the old kitchen garden. Um, uh, this is, you know, big 12, 15 foot wall here. This is the old kitchen garden for the house. Um, and basically it's a combination of, this part is lots of plants, uh, flowers, trees, water features. There's, uh, you've got the lovely glass houses there. And then the other part just over there is mainly for fruit and veg. But as you walk into here, well, it's kind of, it's just blow your socks off time. It really is absolutely stunning. And I just don't know where to go or what to look at first because everything is just looking so fantastic I mean we're in the middle of September and there's bees and butterflies everywhere uh, I mean look at this aster it's still it's just coming out that's going to be like that now right through to really the end of October oh it's going to get better and better flower through till the end of October um, the anemones uh, these absolutely stunning grasses here look at that lovely 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 shiny kind of beige color now there's still a bit of work being done on the historic chimney there uh, might have a look at that a little bit later But the colour, everything's still, there's still so much in flower. And again, this is just beginning to flower, this lovely aster. Again, that lovely blue salvia there. It's just amazing. There's little purple clematis against the wall there. And again, it's hard to beat anemones at this time of year for flowers look at that look at the grass look how bright that is this chancier tufted hair grass gold gold towel yeah aptly named look at these uh, what they call is it persicaria and then you've got elephants here as there, which flower kind of May to April, May. Just so, so much. And then this little scrambling clematis here. Just look at that. Now, the hostas haven't done so well, so let's show something that's not quite perfect. <laughs> let's not be utopian. Let's show a bit of a failure there. Those hostas don't seem to be doing very well. Uh, obviously not being given enough water, I would imagine. But let's not linger on those. Again, just look at this. And again, we've got a lovely tortoiseshell butterfly there that was just on the salvia. And it's now gone over to not sure what that is but those white spikes are absolutely gorgeous and clearly bees and butterflies love that and again you've got your pink anemone you've got this lovely geranium still in flower absolutely beautiful that dark purple in it light lilac on the outside and then this white Lovely white anemone, the blue at the back, lovely contrast. I like blue and white, lovely colours. And then backdrop to the to the cottage there. Uh, so again, these hostas look as though they're struggling a little bit, but everything else is looking absolutely wonderful. I've got this in in my garden and again hoverflies love that there's one or two one or two bees on it there mm. 
then we've got a newer planted area here. So, I mean, this looks quite mature compared to that. We've got a lovely acer there. Look at that. It's going to colour up in the next few weeks. Um, of course, the garden's opening was put back because of COVID by about 18 months. So some of these plants that have been in have probably been in now probably about three years. So they've had time to mature. So really, it's looking really good. If we'd have come maybe two years ago, if we were allowed to come two years ago, it would probably have looked more like this. Still lovely, but you can see how once everything begins to grow and intermingle, you get a much nicer effect. Look at that geranium. And you've got this water feature here which goes over to a main water feature over there. Got these lovely pleached trees which as they grow and then so it will provide a nice cool shady area in here. Colours are already starting to come, lovely. And then you've got this lovely rill going to the main large pond over there. And again, these grasses are just doing it for me at the moment, as, as just as much as anything that's in flower. And then, you know, the bees again are just absolutely loving it. Again, just look at the wind blowing through that grass there. Just delightful. And again, just so many bees. Look at this. I mean, asters are beautiful plants. But I remember when I was a kid, you they were rarely grown because they suffered a lot from mildew but maybe about 20 years ago they they managed to breed ones that were more mildew resistant um, and now I don't see any mildew on any of these whatsoever I just see loads of bees and loads of butterflies there's a comma butterfly there uh, and then you've got that you've got this lovely blue and then the the acid kind of yellow of the euphorbia there and then again that lovely lovely grass hello mr butterfly sun's just gone in a bit which is a bit of a relief actually because it is hot it must be over 30 degrees in here because you know it's a wall garden it's very sheltered uh, there's not there's a slight breeze Again, this lovely, lovely grass. Not going to go into the glass houses because it will be very hot in there, but let's just go and have a quick look. Right, you can only exit from this side anyway, so there's loads of tomatoes in there and Vines, great vines. Oh yes, can feel the heat. <laughs> we just stood here. Isn't that the geranium is lovely. And that's a little small white butterfly on it. And you'll see lots of these clipped beech trees, which obviously are going to carry on being clipped, keep the shape. The great thing about beech is that it keeps its autumn, uh, keeps its foliage, its autumn foliage, or it's just its foliage uh, throughout winter, right until spring when the new growth comes through. So there's going to be something of interest, something of colour here, even through the winter months. Um, of course, these are going to be kept clipped to this size and this shape because beech trees are very big trees if you let them grow they're just going to take over the garden and then you're going to lose all this lovely lovely planting all this lovely diverse planting
again this but when the sun comes out which it's just gone behind a bit of a cloud probably about another five minutes or so so I'm not going to hang around but this just the sun shining through this makes it look metallic it really does it just looks like or glass even you're just looking through through kind of frosted glass you know like you see on frost in a, in a morning on a on a branch or a twig or something it's just magical yeah and this this aster is obviously just beginning to go over and again you've got that lovely rill going to the pond It's lovely echinacea. So you see the same plants, you see the same plants being repeated, but then you see the odd new plant that you haven't seen before coming into the to the to the scheme, to the mixing. Um, and even if you do see, you know, another aster, it's a different variety. I mean the foliage on that, I mean when you did used to plant asters. You just planted them for the flowers. The foliage, as I say, you didn't want to look at because it, it looked horrendous. But you look at that foliage there, and it just looks beautiful on its own. Just the foliage on its own looks absolutely stunning. And just look at this lovely grass with purple and green leaves. Absolutely delightful. Again, contrasting with the white of this, um, is it a kind of Tiarella or something, Heuchera? Yeah, Heuchera, Autumn Bride. So I would imagine this, again, will be colouring up very nicely in the next few weeks. You've got a Stilby. Monardia's done now. You see now you've got a little bit of mildew on that. Bergamot. But it still looks so good. Just that grey kind of tone of the leaves looks fantastic. And again, another different kind of aster. Just look at the colour on that. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's just look back to the old gardener's cottage. That's a lovely, lovely view through there. That's just fantastic. And again, you've just got this rill just going down into the big formal pond. These big agapanthus in these tubs. Again, these have flowered for quite some time. So they're about to finish. You've got... Uh, I think this is a Coreopsis, this yellow and again bees love that again look at that against the blue sky now the sun's come out again absolutely stunning that yellow and this kind of american prairie plant absolutely gorgeous one of my favorite small trees catalpa indian bean tree Again, this Coreopsis against the blue sky is just gorgeous. Again, it's just the height and it stands up. I think I've said before, I like plants that stand up on their own. That, unless obviously you get a gale, you know, can just stand on its own. I hate to see plants staked. If you have to stake a plant, I'm not interested as far as I'm concerned. I mean, obviously, trees initially have to be staked just to give them that initial support. Um, yeah, this is all I can smell herbs here. This is kind of a bit of a herb garden to, towards that formal pond. And then we look this way. So that's the chimney that they're doing some work on. And of course, historically, they used to bring coal, loads of coal down into there underneath and kind of you know use it to heat water to to heat the greenhouses but I think the greenhouses let's just have a look in this one again 
So whereas that's fruit and veg, see tomatoes in there looking fantastic. Uh, this is this is very much kind of desert planting, Mediterranean planting, etc. And you can feel the heat, even though the fan's on. I would imagine you can have heat or have it cool. I would imagine. And again, another beautiful aster, Michaelmas daisy. Stunning. And then again, it, another grass, another lovely grass. Tall and erect and just standing on its own, proud. We are slowly changing now, so we are, we seem to be going to more Mediterranean planting now. I mean, this is, this is now 16 minutes long, so I think what I'll do is, I'll just finish off here. And I'll start another, another video, taking in this part of the garden, this more Mediterranean part. So, bye for now.